it's definitely starting to kick in now, I suppose. Up to now, it hasn't really been uh, much of an effect. I mean, it was crossed beforehand and met a few lads. And, uh, the nerves are definitely starting yeah. to kick in now. It's weird, but uh, look, it's, it's brilliant. It's what you live for these days. And, you know, I know what the boys are feeling now. And you just you, you feed off it, really. Cyril, can Galway repeat the dose from the Leinster final? Yeah, they believe they can, Darren. It's going to be a big ass, but like, I think they're going to take the game to Kilkenny. First 10 minutes is going to have a big bearing. It'll be interested to see who picks up who, especially who picks up Joe Cannon. But like, Galway will want to start well. They're kind of covering, their, they're playing a the blanket defence. They have to hit the front and kind of hit on the break. If they fall behind, it'll be hard enough to come from behind because Kilkenny are masses are getting goals and kind of hanging on to it. But look at even down here, there, you remark that the pitch is excellent, the atmosphere is brilliant. Like, and you just love to be going out there yourself. Absolutely. The, the fact that Kilkenny their players have so much experience of this day and Galway they don't have that is, is that an advantage to Galway or a disadvantage um, I suppose it can be it'll be viewed as a disadvantage or an advantage afterwards yeah. but definitely um, I know from my own days look the first all Ireland can be quite easy you just go with the flow and you just soak it up and enjoy the day and I suppose look for young lads there's no inhibitions um, there's no fear they don't have the baggage maybe that senior players will have so they can go out and cut loose but definitely um, you have to make it happen you can't I suppose stand back and wait for it because the match will go very very quick yeah and the start of this Cyril is going to be ferocious Kilkenny know that Galway were ferocious at the start of the Leinster final yeah the ref's going to have a big bearing on it Darrell like he'll have, he'll have to, the boys know the rules and the, and the coaches know the rules and the ref has the rules so he'll have to apply them just keep a grip on it and I think when he does that it'll, it'll start flowing in but like it's going to be a brilliant final because Kilkenny are the past masters they're hot favourites even though they're not playing as brilliant this year as other years Galway are the new pretenders even Joe Cannon is kind of the pretender to King Henry yeah. but like uh, Galway have a lot of good young lads coming through and you know they are like you know you talk about the young fellas it, it mightn't hit them the first time around and they could just fly I hope they do now gentlemen look what I have here the Liam McCarthy Cup and I'm going to put this between the two Cyril's grabbed it already yeah, Eddie, you're well first you're this. guys where is this going where, I think I'll have to take it back we need it for later where is this going uh, definitely to the west tonight there'll be, there'll be bonfires west of the Shannon tonight Eddie to staying at home <laughs> staying at home lads thanks a lot we will oh, talk again time. at half time thanks for, for that thank you <laughs> All right, Darren, thank you very much indeed. Now, earlier uh, here on the programme, we heard from the Galway manager, Anthony Cunningham. For him, this Solar Ireland final is a first experience in his first year as the Galway boss. Well, not so his counterpart in Kilkenny. Brian Cody has clearly been there and done it all, and yet amazingly, he still seems to uh, carry all the determination and the passion which marked him out in his early days in the job. You know, we've been favourites a long, long time, I suppose. Last year we weren't in favourites, and understandably so. Um, but we have come into the year as favourites to win whatever was going, I suppose, for, for quite a while now. And it's just something you're tagged with. It doesn't come into it, really. It doesn't, it's not an aura there at all. We don't talk about it. We don't think about it. I don't see a big mystery in the whole thing, you know. If you're going to be taking part in this hurling competition, league championship every year, there isn't a lot of point in taking part in it unless you're totally committed to trying to be as successful as you can. Because the feeling that you get from winning certainly beats the feeling you get from not winning. And can't imagine why fellas would get tired of that. I would have said, and I've said many, many times, I'm not just saying it now, obviously, I would have said every year that I would have Galway as a team who were capable of winning the other in the final. And certainly at the start of this year, I would have said the very, very same thing and their form doesn't surprise me because their ability is, you know, it's without question. One of the reasons they lost the match is Galway were too good for us on the day. That was the main reason, definitely. Did we play as well as we should have played or as we would have liked to have played? Absolutely not. I mean, you play as well as you're allowed to play on any given day, I suppose. But I mean, there was no big, massive soul search and there was no big, massive inquest into the thing at all. And you'll probably hear scribes suggesting that there were all sorts of things that happened, the same as all sorts of things were supposed to happen in training sessions as well. Couldn't be further from the truth. On the sideline, I would say we were poor, and, and on the field we were poor. And that's not acceptable, obviously, anywhere, you know. And um, they got the momentum early in the game, and they held on to it, and they, and they grew and grew into the game. To be honest about it, I don't ever feel particularly inspired on the sideline anyway. You know, and um, players take over the thing on match day and the game goes ahead and I don't know, maybe some managers do feel this inspiration. I don't feel particularly this inspiration ever, but you go ahead and you deal with it. But at the end of the day, the calls that have to be made on the day are my responsibility and the responsibility of our selectors. Essentially, the book has to stop with me, if you like, and 
we weren't particularly inspired to make the right calls on that day. People have spoken about the physicality of the game, and the physicality now is a big word, a big buzzword about hurling and all the rest of it. And, you know, it's openly been described as disgraceful and, and dirty and everything else. But I would defy anybody to show me where we took part in any dirty play on that game, in that game. I'm certain of it. I've looked back on the DVD of the game a few times, and apart from pushing and shoving of the ridiculous nature, if you like, that goes on at the start of, of nearly every game now, a bit of horsing with, with shoulders and that, but as regards um, dirt, striking with hurlies around like that, we certainly were not involved in that at all. I saw the belt and it was a long ways away from the ball, that pull was. And I know for certain if one of our players ever did anything like that, that there would be a hullabaloo about it in a major way. Michael Rice is out of hurling for the rest of this year. As a result of that blow, it a very, very serious injury. And I certainly would be very unhappy with it. The fact that we're meeting again, to me, is not about revenge. It's about winning the all Ireland final. It doesn't matter to me who we're playing. We would love to win the game, obviously, because there's certainly more to winning. Yeah, that's the Kilkenny manager, of course, Brian Cody there. Liam Sheedy, as usual, interesting words from Mr Cody. Yeah, I mean, look, at he's prepared his team all the time for coming to Crow Park. Um, you know, he's an exceptional manager. He just seems to get the best out of this bunch all of the time. And, you know, there's no doubt about it. He said, you know, there's not a lot going on in Nolan Park or there's not a lot going on in Langton's and Kilkenny when they meet. But no doubt there is. You know, clearly they know how to prepare for big matches. And they will have hurt it and hurt it and spent a lot of hurt uh, as a result of what happened to them in Leinster final. But I think as well, you know, JJ Delaney and Michael Fenley coming back in and Colin Fenley went off injured. That would have weakened them a, a lot. And obviously, you know, Michael Rice is a big loss to them I think mm. he's a big game player and you know I mean he's he's definitely a last out of the engine room in the middle of the park Brian yeah. bristles understandably for a manager if there's the suggestion that they're too physical and, and again he referred to that there <laughs> yeah I think you know he, he wants his team to play on the edge and they're, they're masters at it and they're right on the edge you know let's be honest about it and you know and yet it was one of their players who took the big blow in that incident well, it, was, so. it was but I think that was unfortunate I mean I, I'd be very disappointed for Michael Rice to be out of the All-Ireland final I think everyone that would be a GA fan would be um, but uh, to me like Patrick Maher pulled and uh, it, it, you know when it slides up along the hurley it's yeah. going to cause damage and I, I was of the was opinion that that's what happened yeah. Yes, but, you know, it was hardly to hardly. I mean, it was. was the one thing about Brian Cody, you have to answer him, is the consistency of his views right down through the ages, from, the, from 1999 onwards, right? You say anything against Kilkenny, he's going to attack back. I hit. <laughs> I had <laughs> the other side of that know, on, a, know, on a few yeah. occasions. But mm -hmm. his overriding principle, and you have to think of this, go away from all that controversy, is he always says that the day. The, the day you're not at your best, you're average. Mm. And the day you're going to be average, you're yeah, going to be beaten. beaten. Yep. And that's mm. what drives him on to the Welsh Cup at the start mm. of the year, followed by the league, followed by the Leinster Championship, followed by the All Ireland. He wants to win all of them. And every young fella coming into that Kilkenny team, that's the template that they now have to follow. And long term, that will be his huge legacy. And he well deserved it. On the other side, he well deserved that doctorate he got from, sure. uh, from the Cork University during the, during the week. And we should congratulate him Absolutely. on that. Sure. Because like we won't see the like of him again, and unless he had that kind of a, an abrasive temperament, he wouldn't be as good as he is. Obviously. Okay. Now, whichever way today's final works out, uh, it's going to bring joy to some of the finest players in the modern game and heartbreak for a number of others. Men like Kilkenny's own Larkin, their captain and former Player of the Year, or perhaps Galway's Damien Hayes, over ten years fighting the cause for the tribesmen and still playing with huge pride in the jersey. We caught up with the two of them recently, and also two stars of the past for Galway and Kilkenny. Owen came to prominence, I'd say about 2005, with, with James Stevens' club. And Owen fitted in very comfortably early on and made a big impact uh, from the start. I think it's winning that mo motivates you. And I suppose we, we always have a couple of young lads coming in as well, uh, pushing in for places. And, you know, if you're not prepared to uh, fight for your place, 
you're, you're gone off the scene fairly quickly. The beauty about this team is that there's so many leaders in the team, so much experience and such dedication to, to the game and to the Kilkenny hurling. So like, his job will be made uh, a good bit easier by that. 15 lads go on the field, there's 15 leaders there and um, you know, the, the name captain doesn't come into it. Good to catch a ball, uh, very good in the air. Tremendous skill. Uh, his, 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 his ball control is fantastic. Every one of us were, were hurt. Um, didn't, we didn't play what we, like what we can play, and obviously Galway were brilliant on the day, and he couldn't take anything away from us. I suspect that Owen will be playing full forward, um, and, and in which case uh, he would be expecting him to do what, he, what he's done against Tipperary, um, to try and win every ball that comes in, open up the, the backs, lay it off if that's the best thing to do, or take on the defence. Yeah, Galway have been put under a huge amount of pressure over the last couple of years because, they, you know, they have the hurlers and it was always said that they couldn't put back-to-back -back victories, but they have that monkey off their back. As the makings of a really tasty final. Here comes David Burke, sending it across, they're queuing up, Hayes, oh what a goal, absolutely brilliant hurling by Galway. I suppose when he's out there, he's actually a back's nightmare, um, he's one of those guys that you think you haven't beaten and, and he's still hanging around you, you're trying to hit a ball and he'll hoop you, it doesn't matter what size you are, he will tackle you, he'll push you, he'll, he, he'll commit to himself 110%. Last time All Ireland final was 2005, and it's seven years ago, and it's so long ago, you know. And ah, there's so many regrets about that final, you know, for for everyone that was involved, you know. I felt we were there and thereabouts, you know, and uh, we could have won that All Ireland. We went up to to Crow Park to win the Leinster final. You know, I I think a lot of teams go up to play Kilkenny to seek and to keep the score down effectively or keep it to a certain stage. We went up to win the Leinster final. I think the Galway team and the Galway management have kept things at a very low key. Leinster final, absolutely brilliant. No one ever wants to go out and lose a final. And Kilkenny didn't want to go out and lose that final. But it's not the all earned. Of course you're getting, you're getting nervous coming up tonight. And, and if you're not nervous, it's a sign you don't care. When you're out in Crow Park, after the first five minutes, you just do not realise where you are at times. You hear the crowd roar, um, and after that, the nerves are gone. And especially if you're playing Kilkenny, they're definitely gone. We know that it's going to be a huge battle again against Kilkenny, but as I said, we're, we'll, we'll go up to the All-Ireland again to try and win the game, you know, and to give it everything. And that's all you can do. Now, another big event happening here at Croke Park this afternoon is the launch of a call to gather to the Irish diaspora right across the globe. 2013 has been designated as the Gathering Ireland as people are urged to invite friends and relatives home during the year-long celebration of Ireland and indeed of all things Irish. Over 70 million people worldwide now claim Irish ancestry and it's hoped that many of uh, those will visit Ireland 